Hello, my dear friends. Welcome or welcome back. My name is Sarita. So happy that you're joining me here today. I have promised you a Kringle year-end review for quite some time, and this is it. <laughs> but I have been dragging my feet and procrastinating because frankly, I really, really, really do not want to do this video. Um, and I urge you, if you are one of those Kringle fans that just can't bear to hear anything negative about the company, I kind of urge you to maybe pass on by this video and um, pick me up on the other end. Because I know that it may just upset you and I don't want to upset anyone. Um, I actually tried to record this video two days ago and I talked for an hour and five minutes. <laughs> And I was like, okay, fine, I recorded the video. I didn't feel great about it. Um, and then I watched it back and I just, I couldn't, I just couldn't. It, toward the end, it just started getting like ranty and it was, it, I just hated it. I just hated it. So I said, okay, re-record, shorter, sweeter, to the point, and um, let's try this again, part two. Um, I'm just, I, I really hate negativity. I gotta be honest. Like you almost never see a video from me. That's like worst candles of, it will just never happen. Um, not the kind of energy that I like. Um, and I will never like hate on a company for no reason, or frankly, just hate on a candle company anyway. Um, I just, it's not my spirit and the candles that I purchase, I purchased because I thought I would like them or love them. So nobody's sending me PR candles free. Um, whatever I get is because I thought that I was gonna like it. And when I discover that I don't like it um, and or it doesn't perform the way that it should, it hurts my heart and it's a surprise and an unpleasant one. And I really don't wanna go back and dwell on those things, you know what I mean? I think all of us in the candle community probably can and should like grieve when we come across candles that aren't working for us, that aren't performing the way that they should, and that, that goes for like large scale candle companies as well. So I really think that Kringle took a step back this year, like a serious step back. And the extent of it didn't really hit me until kind of the end of this year. And I mean, it's been a hot minute since I've purchased anything from Kringle. It's been a few months and I am not very inclined to purchase any going forward. That does not mean that I won't. It just means that I'm far less interested. And when I think about how I felt about Kringle a year ago, so January of 2023, I was so excited about Kringle. And for the most part, if it when a new candle came out and I had any kind of interest in it at all, it was anywhere near my preferences. Like I pulled the trigger and I bought it, you know? Um, so I, I think at the beginning of the year, I had pretty good confidence in Kringle. Like that is almost completely shot at this point. Like I've seen some candles here toward the end of the year that actually kind of interest me a little bit, especially on the reserve line. And I just can't bring myself to do it. I can't. And I think to myself, as much as I just wanna like keep that to myself, like if you don't have anything positive to say, just don't say anything at all. There's part of me that thinks that I owe all of you and the public and perhaps even Kringle themselves an explanation as to why it is that I feel this way. Um, and what it is that I would like to see going forward that would help me to feel better about Kringle and more happy, confident, and enthusiastic about purchasing them in the future. When it comes down to it, the two main, and these are just like simple personal preferences, the two main reasons why I'm not loving Kringle right now is number one, because I have discovered that I don't love 100% soy formulas, and I also don't like gourmands, which is not a recent discovery that's an older one, right? And it kind of looks as though, or it seems, as if Kringle is really putting most, if not all of their eggs, in the basket of 100% soy and gourmands. 
And if that's the case going forward, it's just not gonna be the company for me. It really kind of comes down to that. But the more complex answer is that there's a lot of developments that have been made over this year and whispers of developments that are going forward that I think are potentially problematic even if you are a fan of soy, even if you are a gourmand lover. And so let's talk about what some of those were. Um, Crinkle did have some, a couple, a couple, a couple high moments and a couple successful moments this year. And I wanna talk about those first because positive is always great to start with first, right? I've got my notes here um, that I actually ripped up and threw in the trash can after I recorded that first video and then had to go and dig out <laughs> once I realized that I needed to re-record, but I do have them here. So the first, or actually, I hate to say it, but one of the only bright spots this year for Kringle and truly unqualified success was the Halloween collection. And that's really no surprise because Kringle, Kringle has really kind of captured the corner, <laughs> captured the market here for Halloween candles, at least within companies of a particular kind of size and range and scope. So of the candle companies that would be similar um, in size, scope, et cetera, um, would be like Bath & Body Works, Yankee, Goose Creek, um, and then other ones like, um, uh, other ones like Milk House and like some smaller ones like Veluspa, et cetera, all of those. Within all of those candle companies, I can't think of one that is at this point committing so hard to that Halloween haul and really creating a niche for itself. Homeworks is another one too. So Homeworks came out with like three, I think, or four. I think Bath & Body Works did three. I can't tell you how many Goose Creek did. It was a little bit more than that, but nobody does what, Hall what Kringle does. And Kringle has developed a very avant-garde, um, spooky, dirty, like totally, authentic, committed Halloween vibe for itself here. It has a cult following with these Halloween candles. And there are people who don't generally purchase from Kringle at any other time in the year. They do for this Halloween haul. And I just think that that's fantastic. So this year there were 24 Halloween candles, um, but only a select few of those were truly new. And I went back and tried to watch the videos and try to piece together which ones exactly were new again. Um, and I came up with at least five in the classic tumbler, which this was one of them actually, which is Halloween right here. So in this like classic black tumbler, there were at least five new ones. Coven, Halloween, Seven Days, It's Evil, and Sinister. At least those five, there might've been a sixth and I'm missing it. Then there were, um, I think about six three wick, like painted jars or wraparounds. And of those six, at least three of them were new. So Black Cats and Bats, Hallowed Ground, and Thriller, I believe was new as well. Outside of those three, I'm not sure. Definitely Forbidden Forest, which was the green one, was a repackage of succulents. Um, and then there was a Pumpkin Smash, which was a repackage of Pumpkin French Toast. Back in the day, it was in the country line. And then there was a Trick or Treat one. But I think there have been a couple iterations of Trick or Treat over the years, and I think it was one of them. And actually, I think they did Trick or Treat in this line too that was a different Trick or Treat. Very confusing and unnecessary, and that should probably not happen because it was super confusing. However, I do think that those three in the three wicks were truly new. Um, so you have at least eight new ones out of that 24. Anyway, it was a super successful um, run for them. And I noticed on the 26th when Kringle went to an after Christmas sale that there were some select Halloween candles that were heavily discounted off. But honestly, they went fast. And there weren't as many as there were last year, which is indicative either of the fact that they limited their production a little bit more or it just really did a lot better than last year. And it may be a combination of both. So I think Halloween was fantastic. 
Halloween isn't really my belly wick. <laughs> and as I confessed this year, um, several of those candles are a little bit too spooky for me. They're just too off-putting, not my genre, and um, just too scary. <laughs> But I think, like I said, that it has an amazing following and they've really captured a niche there. And from a marketing and like consumer standpoint, like that is something that Kringle really needs to cons like continue to put a lot of thought and effort into. Um, and I think that they're doing that. So that's fantastic. I personally would like to see less candles and this is gonna be a common theme for this entire video. For Kringle this year, and even in the Halloween line, which was fairly successful, I think the message that needs to come through and room for improvement for them is that more is not always more, okay? Um, I personally was overwhelmed by the 24, and I think there's no reason why those Halloween candles couldn't be limited to like 20, like 14 maybe. So like 10 less, 14 or 15, right? Um, I don't know that you need to do the three wicks either. These are just so stunning. If there was, this is the reserve kind of like vibe too, which actually I don't love because I don't think that this particular, particular aesthetic travels well to all other seasons in the year. And unless you have a very dark home or a certain very cool modern aesthetic in terms of your decor, um, this won't necessarily always fit what's going on in your house. So I have reservations about this as like a continued um, reserve kind of aesthetic, but if there was ever a season where this just fits perfectly, it is the Halloween season. These are stunning and people are willing to pay the premium on them. No big deal. So if I was the CEO of the company, I would actually consider just sticking with these. Don't bother with country. Don't bother with three wicks. Just go with this and go with like 14 of them. And of those 14, let like at least like six or seven of them, if not more, be like returning favorites. And I do think there are a few core in that Halloween collection that probably should come around every year. Like I think the Sleepy Hollow one, the Witch's Cauldron one, and then there's like another one too, and I can't remember what it is. Anyway, it does seem like there's a standout. Three of them really stand out. And I think that those could very easily come back every year, especially if you like gave a different label every year or switched off the labels year on year out to keep it kind of fresh, right? And then you have returning favorites that may show up like every other year, yeah? And then you have like six or so that are completely new. Um, that's how I personally would do it. And I think limiting it to those and really making sure that those core 14 are fantastic would be more than enough. Like I said, most companies are doing three or four or maybe five Halloween candles. 15 is a lot. It's a lot. Um, I don't think that we need 24. It's just my personal opinion. And I think that it gets overwhelming. I mean, the brand ambassadors didn't even get the three wicks, weren't able to speak to them. It took us a long time as a consumer, consumers to figure out what was going on with that. So I think, and it was partly just because there were just too many. There were absolutely too many. So I would like to see Kringle just be a little bit more thoughtful about that. Let's talk about best candle of the year, which actually follows Halloween really well. Because unfortunately for me, there was only one true standout candle the entire year that was worthy of like a best new candle nominee. And for those of you who watch my channel, it should be no surprise that that candle is Hallowed Ground, which was actually one of the three wicks. Um, I love this candle. The notes on it were saffron, smoky cedar wood, honey, sage, sandalwood, musk, vanilla, vanilla patchouli, and tonka. Um, it's a really bold candle. Gosh, it's gorgeous. It's basically a fall conceptual. It's a lot of honey. It's a lot of amber. It's some patchouli and sage. And the whole thing just gives you this amazing glowing harvest conceptual. I think you could do away with the spooky packaging. And I've said before, I would love to see this come back in the main line, specifically in the country line, and maybe keep the name Hallowed Ground and go with a 
Americana, um, fields of grain kind of vibe. Um, and this candle would be gorgeous. Again, there were candles in the 24 Halloween candles that um, were either just straight up gourmands or they were candles that frankly could have been marketed for more of a general fall audience. There are people who don't like the spooky packaging. And so including those candles in your big Halloween haul means that you're locking certain candles away from a consumer demographic that otherwise would be very interested in them. And I don't think there's anything wrong with really limiting that collection to your truly spooky Halloween candles. Yes, that means some people are not going to purchase that particular Halloween collection, but then there's a lot of other people who only purchase that Halloween collection. So I think it evens out. And I would like to see some of these. These are the candles that you could very easily remove from that Halloween collection and put elsewhere. I would have loved to have seen this in the fall collection, which otherwise was a very lackluster fall collection. This would have been a great one. One of the Halloween other candles that almost made a Best Candle nominee, I wanted to, was this Halloween candle, which is a gorgeous, gorgeous anise forward candle. Gosh, anise, not black licorice, don't get it twisted. It was not a candy kind of candle, but it was a beautiful, warm, dry, baking spice anise, as in a pizzelle, if you're Italian American, with a ton of pumpkin spices and deep richness. A gorgeous fragrance, at least on cold. Unfortunately, it did not perform very well for me um, it didn't have great strength and throw, although it was decent. I mean, it was kind of in the five or six range, I believe. Um, but what was more problematic is that it was uneven in terms of the way the fragrance came across. So some days I would get a little bit of anise. Some days I would get a little pumpkin spice. Some days I would get neither. I mean, it just, it was uneven in the way that it burned. And for me personally, like I, I was even thinking about making it an honorable, honorable mention, but I just couldn't recommend it on a certain level. So, and and now that I've been burning a lot of these Kringle soy candles for the year, um, way more soy candles than I think I've ever burned in my life and maybe would want to burn in my life, I now realize that this kind of unevenness of burn has probably far less to do with the fragrance quality or oils themselves and much more with the wax formula, which unfortunately just doesn't, it's, it's a different scent experience. We'll put it that way and we'll talk more about that in a second. So Halloween was another standout and if it hadn't been plagued with the performance issues, I think could have been a best new candle as well. And so this goes to show you that that Halloween collection was really a very strong high for Kringle in more than one respect. Um, and a couple really standout candles came through, new ones came through in that collection. That probably this one could also have been marketed as a fall candle. Again, it wasn't terribly spooky. I think it was relying very heavily on the anise licorice note to make it um, spooky, but because it didn't go black licorice candy and rather like a warm baking anise, it wasn't spooky and it really could very nicely have been a beautiful fall candle in their fall collection. Okay, unfortunately that's the end of the highs for the year. I do think that the spring and summer collection, which came out very early in the year, was decent. And in fact, probably the best collection for the year outside of the special Halloween one. But it didn't have much competition and the bar is very low. So if you remember in the spring and summer, in the Kringle line, um, spring and summer collection was 12, six in the country, six in the Kringle. The country, the six country ones were the first 100% soy reformulation, which then quickly the entire catalog was reformulated and all the paraffins were thrown out. Um, so in the Kringle line for the spring and summer, we had Mon Amour, which is a beautiful fragrance and intoxicating, but it's a, just a dupe of Baccarat Rouge. Um, which is a very popular perfume of the day. Um, so as much as I would love to make that 
a best new candle nominee because on its own the fragrance is spectacular. I really can't given the fact that it's just a dupe of a popular perfume and actually the performance on it was not great. Tea Time was another one in that collection. Tea Time I did think about making a best new candle nominee um, but I had it, I burned it and while it was good it wasn't a repurchase for me and I think it was just marginally better than like the, the sweet tea and lemon one that for instance Bath & Body Works does. So it was a good mid-range candle, but it wasn't like innovative enough or brilliant enough, I think, to really be a best new candle. Um, then Avocado and Palm, which was a conceptual, quite good actually, but very faint. Botanicals, which was a very nice floral, but it didn't break the mold and again, bad strength and throw. Saltwater taffy, which probably had a good strength and throw, but also was just very like fruity tooty, like it, not my style. I didn't purchase it. And sea breeze, which was kind of a generic beach conceptual, again, plagued with bad strength and throw. On the countryside, it was just a host of very loud gourmands, cosmic cupcakes, blue raspberry, coconut and blueberry tart, cookies and cream cake, grapefruit and rosemary, and sweet peach. And of those six, I thought grapefruit and rosemary was a standout. And I still haven't bought it in the regular jar, but I would be very interested in buying that in the regular jar. I really liked it. It wasn't like, you know, it wasn't particularly innovative. It was mostly grapefruit forward, but a very beautiful and authentic and strong grapefruit um, that I would like to try. Unfortunately, a lot of the gourmand folks did not like it, which was unfortunate because I think it was the standout. That spring and summer collection was decent. And the reason that it was decent was not unfortunately the performance, but the range and the diversity of candles. So with the exception of the country line, which was just straight up gourmand, you really did have several conceptuals. You had a good floral um, and yeah, and one perfume dupe. So it, I, I thought it was a, a healthy range of candles. Um, and I now in hindsight, looking back, the most diverse collection that they had this year. Um, they did have two other like regular collections. So they did have also a fall collection of 12 and a holiday collection of 12. Um, and I think by the way that that's a good number of like, like new candles, just those three like major collections. Um, I wouldn't necessarily change that. I think those are probably good. You could drop it down to 10, 10, and 10, um, but those have been kind of your right up the middle um, new collections for the year. And most candle companies, we expect something like that in the spring and in the summer. We expect something in the fall and we expect something for Christmas. So um, those are fine in terms of the number of offerings that they gave us. As we've talked about before, the fall collection was not good. It just wasn't. Um, and it was a ton of gourmands, most of which were kind of mediocre. Um, the standout was in the Kringle line, which was Bourbon Bonfire. And I did buy that one and burn that one in a three wick, but it wasn't great. It was decent. For me, I would not repurchase it. Um, it again, as with Tea Time, it was a decent candle that was a decent mid-range. Um, and should not have been a standout, but given the weakness of all the other candles, it ended up being the standout. Um, so, and many of them were just complete disasters, like um, Vineyard Harvest, for instance. And then a lot of them were just ho-hum, like we wouldn't really want to see them again. Autumn Spice, like Pumpkin Waffles. It, very similar to ones that we've seen before or that are in any generic candle companies catalog. You can go to CVS, you can go to Kroger and get an autumn spice candle. So just even conceptually, not great. Um, and then many of them did not perform well. Holiday candles, similar, but marginally better because there was a little bit more range. Um, Blue Spruce came out in the country, which was good. Um, although I think not as brilliant as other iterations of Blue Spruce have been prior to this point. There were a couple other conceptuals, thank God, in that country line, Holly Berry and Tis the Season. I got a daylight of both of them and they weren't great. Tis the Season was also especially not great. Um, 
And then on the holiday, on the Kringle side, Father Christmas was a conceptual standout, but it performed abysmally for me, absolutely abysmal. And it was a little bit redundant of hallowed ground. So there was that. Um, other than that, yeah, not a whole lot to write home about there. So pretty lackluster fall and holiday collections. Okay in the spring, um, but shouldn't have been a standout and kind of was given the, the range of other candles that we got. Then we come to the reserves and the reserves were a disaster in my opinion. And here's a real low point. So I actually counted up all of the new candles. I tried to, I tried to reconstruct all of the collections and all of the candles. And I came up with a number and it, it could be plus or minus a couple, 82 new candles this year, 82. If that doesn't blow your mind, I'm gonna say it again really slowly. 82 new candles from Kringle in a 12 month period. That is insanity. It's insanity. Like I don't think Bath and Body Works came that close to anything like 82. What other companies did? Like for a company the size of Kringle or frankly any candle company, 82 new candles is about 45 or 50 new candles too many for your year. I I don't know I don't know what the vision was. I don't know why they thought that many was appropriate. Obviously, a lot of them were these like very limited range reserve kind of candles, and we're still not entirely sure what the concept of reserve candles are supposed to be about. We've been told that they're more premium fragrance oils, but we have no way of verifying that. So we've been told that there's greater strength and throw when in fact, in practice, they are consistently less strength and throw than the average Kringle candle that we've been used to over the years. We've been told that this is a more avant-garde conceptual experience, a la like late night, you know, with the fast food candle and fire and all those different things. But then we got so many candles this year, like this one, Blue Orchid, which was just straight up a men's cologne and not a very special or like interesting one, very generic. Why is this in the reserve line, for instance, as opposed to the regular line? And even if it were in the regular line, it would still not be a standout in the regular line. But why are we paying like a couple extra dollars for this? Why is it limited edition? Um, the, there has not, the Kringle Reserve line has not been well motivated for a while. Um, and then this year there were just an enormous number of them. Like you turned around and there was a reserve candle. So there was a reserve candle launch in February, in April, in July, in June, in September and October, there was a fantasy collection and then there was the Halloween collection. I mean, it was just an insane number of new candles. And when the dust clears, only one of them I thought was worthy of recognition. And now there were several reserve ones toward the end because I was exhausted that I was really interested in and just didn't purchase because I had had it. <laughs> so there's a caveat there. I wanted to smell Gilded Leaves and the Red Maple one and maybe the Santal and Pumpkin one. Those ones I was interested in. And unfortunately by September, I just, I couldn't do it anymore. So it's possible that one of those three is quite good. Um, I'm especially interested in the red maple. <laughs> I, I think maybe that was very unique and a standout, but like I said, I mean, it's gone now and I just, I, I couldn't get my hands on it and I'm just exhausted. I'm exhausted. So, but how many of you out there, of these 82 new candles, how many of them are being clamored for? How many would you like to see return? How many really made a mark and really were memorable? It's not okay for us to have had 82 new candles and really very few that we couldn't live without, that we wouldn't see something comparable in another candle company that perhaps performs better. It's, it's just simply not okay. 
It's not. I do think that, um, and this was a gourmand, the jelly donut candle that came out in February seems to have been fairly memorable and one that people really talk about and really want. So that seems to have been successful. And I think that that was good. That said, in between us, like you can get a good jelly donut candle from Bath and Body Works, you know? Um, I don't know that there's anything there that is so remarkable, so unique, um, that Kringle is bringing something to the table and to the market that another candle company couldn't do also very well um, with a much lower price point and greater accessibility and availability. You know what I mean? Um, and that's the other thing is of the 82 new candles, 48 at least were true gourmands. There were a few that were overlap ones that could be considered gourmand and other things, and I did not include those in the 48. So I was conservative. Conservatively, 48 of them were true straight up gourmands, which is almost 60% of the new candles this year. I don't love that because I don't love gourmands. Okay, that's part of the reason why I'm no longer excited about this company. And if they're gonna continue going forward like this, it's just not something that I'm interested in. I also don't think that it's a good marketing strategy. I don't think it's a good company angle for a couple of reasons. The first one being that traditionally, Kringle has never been great at gourmands. That is not to say that they don't have several standouts that are gourmands, like the blueberry muffin one, for instance. I don't like that candle, but I wouldn't like any candle that was an authentic blueberry muffin kind of candle, okay? So objectively, I think it's quite an authentic candle. It has a following. It's been in the collection for a really long time. That was a real knockout in terms of a gourmand. And they've had several like that. But generally speaking, from what I can tell, Kringle has a niche that is complex conceptuals. They are extraordinarily good at complex conceptuals. And a lot of other candle companies are frankly not good at that. So that gave them a real corner. But if they're gonna start doing gourmands, they're going face to face now with like Harry Slatkin, with Homeworks, with Bath and Body Works, not even to mention Goose Creek. There are other candle companies that have been doing that for a very long time and do it very well. I don't think that Kringle is gonna compete well with those companies. And I don't think that they should try to. I don't know why they're putting their eggs in that basket. I just don't. And that's objectively now, that has nothing to do with my personal preference. It seems as though many of the gourmand candles this year were just lackluster. They were just kind of boring. And then some of them didn't perform well, you know? Um, some of them were dupes of other more popular companies as well. So not great, especially if it doesn't perform all that well. Um, I kind of get the sense, and this could be completely mistaken, but I kind of get the sense that Kringle this year was catering very hard toward the preferences of many of their brand ambassadors. Because the brand ambassadors seem to all pretty much have the same fragrance preference, which is that they all like fairly simple gourmands um, and can have limited appreciation for things outside of that range but really, really want a gourmand and really seem to want new gourmands coming down the pike all the time. Um, and that may be true of gourmand lovers across the board, is that gourmand lovers tend to need and crave a lot of variety all the time. Whereas I wonder if like more complex conceptual fans tend to kind of savor and sit like be be more content with a limited range of like really deep and powerful conceptuals, if that makes sense. So there might be like a consumer demographic, like culture change there between the two. Um, I do think sidebar that they probably need to get a few more brand ambassadors who have different preferences, just to keep it diverse, <laughs> just to keep it diverse. Um, I know that there are a lot of, candle buyers out there, long time Kringle candle buyers who appreciate the complex conceptuals and the outdoorsy candles. 
And I think there needs to be more representation there. And frankly, I think that that is, that's the emphasis that Kringle has always had. And I just don't know that it's a good move to move away from that. I just don't. So 48 or 60% of gourmands this year, many of which were not great. Um, a lot of dupes of things, <laughs> like Mon um, a lot of dupes, you know, like leaf peeper that was supposed to just be like leaves from Bath and Body Works. Um, there was a, a brand ambassador who said, I was watching them a few weeks ago and they said something like, isn't it great that Bath and Body Works or that Kringle, um, I love it how they like are putting out candles that are basically dupes of well-loved candles from other companies, but are not as strong. They don't smack you in the face. So that's a lot better. <laughs> and I kind of smiled because I just thought like, okay, like that's, it's a very glass half full kind of way of looking at it. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, when I was in retail and I think I worked so many retail stores <laughs> and when you're a retail sales associate and, a, and perhaps even especially one that really loves the company that you're working for, you learn how to sell products like that. You know, you're always looking at the glass half full and not mentioning the glass half empty. And the glass half empty here is that this candle is not creative because it's a dupe of somebody else's candle, number one. And number two, it's not as strong and it doesn't perform as well as another candle company. And most candle buyers are not gonna consider those two things to be positives. They're just not, okay? Um, especially when the candle company in question is one that has brick and mortar stores that allow you to go in and purchase fairly conveniently and return candles conveniently, et cetera, et cetera. It's just not, again, why are we competing against Bath & Body Works? Like, I just think that's a losing strategy. I do. And it was doubly embarrassing when a person like Kent from Candle Channel got a hold of these fall candles, Leaf Peeper included, and specifically in regard to that candle, basically said, as if it was the emperor's new clothes, why would I buy a candle that is essentially a dupe of Bath & Body Works when I can go to Bath & Body Works and get the candle for a fraction of the price when it's on sale, a fraction of the price, and it's got stronger strength and throw? Like, I, I mean, it was an open question, but like kind of a rhetorical one at the same time. Like, why would you do that? A candle that is too strong is actually not much of a detraction for most people. There are things you can do with a candle that's like too strong. You can put it in a small space and kind of allow it to filter through your living space rather than giving it pride of place, um, like right out where you are moving around the house. Um, you can take it out of the hurricane. <laughs> you can burn it for less time. Like there's all kinds of things you can do, but a candle that doesn't have much strength and throw is a hard problem. There's, there's, there's very little that you can do except put it in a hurricane or in a small space. Um, Kent also said, and I agree with him, that for him, the soy candles have a much more muffled kind of feel to them. So the fragrance was a dupe of like leaves, for instance, but whereas leaves comes through with a brightness and a clarity, um, that was missing in these candles. And I think that that's the case. And I don't think it has to do with incompetence on the part of Kringle. I think it has to do with the soy formula. And now that I've bought a ton of soy candles from them over this year, I'm much more confident saying that I think the soy formula is to blame. There is something about the soy formula that airbrushes out fragrances. You don't get the very punchy lows or 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 bass notes, you don't get the very punchy high notes. You kind of get the outlines of the fragrance in almost an impressionistic kind of way. Or like, you know, if you're underwater in a pool and people are like yelling at you underwater and it's like garbled like that, that's the way that a lot of these fragrances came across for me. Um, and at first I thought they were just the fragrance themselves. Now I'm fairly confident it's the formula. 
Um, and the fragrance sits unevenly in the wax formula too. So from day to day, your burn and fragrance experience may be different. And I, again, think that that has to do with the way that the fragrance actually sits in the soy formula. And bear with me now because I am, oh, by the way, there were lid issues too. Bear with me because I'm not a scientist, I'm not a chemist, and I don't make candles for a living, so I could be wrong about this. But here's a soy candle, and do you see all of those like holes there? Um, to me, it looks as though the, um, the, the soy candles here, or the soy formula, is less dense than paraffin. And I brought a paraffin candle for my first video and I don't have it here with me, but you know how paraffin candles are, right? I mean, they're just like a rock. <laughs> they're super dense, very hard wax, and I get the sense that the paraffin wax is just super dense like that, whereas soy, it's, it seems to be a lot lighter and it has a lot of holes in it. And I think that on the molecular level, that I suspect that's probably the case, that the molecules are larger and that they they don't they don't compact quite as well as like paraffin does. Um, and from that, I wouldn't be surprised if the fragrance sits unevenly and that it's not distributed in the same way as like a paraffin wax, which may be the reason why. I often get a very inconsistent fragrance experience burning 100% soy. Also, sidebar, they tend to burn very quickly, much more quickly than the paraffin, which is odd, and it shouldn't do that because actually soy burns at a much higher temperature than paraffin does. So paraffin waxes actually burn very, very easily. They pool easily, by the way. Um, and so all things being equal, they should burn down faster than a soy candle. But, but in my experience, the soy candles go very, very fast. And again, that would be indicative of the fact that it's not a dense formula. It's got a lot of holes in it, right? Um, soy candle wax also doesn't have a good shelf life. It just doesn't. Like I have paraffin candles from Yankee Candle from like the 80s and 90s that are still in pristine condition and would still be burned perfectly well. And as a candle collector, actually that's really important to be able to store candles that you really, really like. These soy candles don't have that kind of shelf life. Um, the plant-based ones generally don't. Um, the Voluspa candles, for instance, are all coconut wax and they're a disaster. Not only are they super soft wax, but they're just like, they're almost like obsolete after one year. Like I can't, I can't keep them, <laughs> I can't keep them past a year. Yeah. So that's kind of another detraction from soy. Um, the only real standout benefit from 100% soy is that they do burn cleaner and you don't get as much smut on your jar. It's as simple as that. Um, and I know there are a lot of people that prize that more highly than anything else. And, um, you know, yeah, at, at the cost of everything else, they want that kind of a wax. And this is a free country. You can totally have those preferences. But for me personally, as like a serious candle person, I would love a clean formula too but it's not at the expense of all the other things. And it's one thing for the strength and throw to not be great on a soy formula, which is just a fact. It's just a fact. Um, but then when the fragrance is sitting unevenly in it and it's not coming across with a brightness and a clarity that I expect from, for instance, a paraffin candle, for me, it's not a good trade-off. It's just not, because for me, the fragrance trumps all. And I'm just not convinced that this soy, this 100% soy formula is giving a good fragrance experience. So I'm not happy about Kringle rushing to do 100% soy across the board. I really liked it when there was 100% soy in the Kringle line, but then we had a choice of like paraffin in the country line. And I know that there were some people who really liked 100% soy, refused to burn anything paraffin, who would say, well, there were certain fragrances that I wanted in the country lineup that I couldn't burn because they were paraffin. Well, first of all, you can melt them. 
That's the first thing. Second of all, maybe Kringle could have gone to a situation where they poured the same fragrance across the board and it was just available in both 100% soy and in paraffin. That would have done away with that kind of inequality there um, and or lack of availability across the board and it still would have given people a choice. But now those of us who don't love 100% soy have no choice and most of us are unhappy. We're very unhappy. And I was a lover of that country line. I loved that country line. I loved the aesthetic. I loved the colored wax. I even liked the shape. It was nostalgic to old school Yankee Candle and especially appropriate given that the CEO is the son of the founder of Yankee Candle. I loved many of the conceptual fragrances in that country line that may or may not be reformatted and may or may not come back in soy I suspect primarily because they don't translate well in soy and they don't perform well in soy. And if they were to be attempted, the memory of consumers would be such that like they, they couldn't put it on the shelf. They just couldn't. They couldn't offer it in 100% soy. So some of those fragrances just may be lost to us. I loved that country line, and I feel as though this year the country line was just driven into the ground. And I feel a certain kind of way about it. It makes me upset, it makes me kind of bitter and resentful, and I hate being that way, but I just feel like something was taken away from some of us who really appreciated something, and all of our choices are now, like, we don't have voice anymore. We don't have voice. And even the 100% soy advocates who love that Kringle line, they concede the fact that even the, the new country candles are not performing. They're just not. They, they've been a real weak link. So everybody's unhappy now. <laughs> and, you know, there's a lot of talk about tweaking those country candles and getting them up to speed with the way that the 100% modern tumblers work. But is that going to happen? I don't know. There's talk too of them just completely going away of that particular format because they look dated, because they look like, you know, nobody wants that like Tumblr design anymore, which I don't actually think is true. Um, but I kind of get the sense that there are certain people that won't rest until the entire catalog is just these modern tumblers that are 100% soy. God bless. If that's the direction Kringle wants to go, that's fine. But there's a lot of us that just will stop purchasing from Kringle. And there's a lot of us who have stopped purchasing from Kringle because of these changes. Um, one of the changes that is coming down the pike, apparently there are whispers, is that the medium size is gonna go away from both the modern tumblers and the country ones. I think that's a huge mistake because I personally love that medium size, and I think a lot of people do, frankly. It's a little less expensive. No, you don't get as much bang for your buck, you know, but at the same time, many of us aren't gonna get through an entire large one. We've got tubs of like half burned Kringle candles, especially in the paraffin, they burned very, very slow. And for those of us who burn a lot of candles, and frankly, the consumer demographic for Kringle customers are the kind of serious customers that burn a lot of candles, you know? That medium is actually the perfect size. Now that's gonna go away and a lot more is gonna be done with multiple wicks. All things being equal, I'm actually a fan of multiple wicks and if they're gonna stay with this 100% soy formula, they need several more wicks. They just do, you know? Um, and yeah, but the thing about it is like, while I support multiple wicks, the real issue here is that you have a so you have a wax formula and you have a certain kind of fragrance development that no longer is giving you the same strength and throw that old school paraffin candles gave you. I meant to bring it here, but like I hit a Yankee candle, like blueberry candle, a black band paraffin, one wick, one wick. In the 80s and the 90s, <laughs> that candle is a 10. It's a 10. You would burn that one wick in your kitchen and you could smell it down the street, okay? I don't understand why we're not making candles that strong anymore. Um, part of it has to do with the wax formula preference 
um, there's a certain ceiling and wax, soy wax formulas can't go past them. So that's one thing. But how many wicks do we need now to get a reasonable strength and throw? Because back in the day, back in the old school Yankee day, one wick was all you needed. One wick. Okay. So keep that in mind as we go to all the multiple wicks. I mean, even if we start to get a strength and throw that we're like more or less satisfied with, that's with three wicks. <laughs> the problem is why, is, why are we not making a candle now that's strong enough with one wick? Why? I, I guess I'm just really unsure about that. Um, and that goes beyond Kringle, I suppose, as a company. Um, but it does play into their, their, again, their intentions to kind of branch out, not into better wax formula, not into better fragrance, concentration and combinations, but the solution is just multiple wicks. Again, I support multiple wicks at this point because it is a solution, but it kind of ignores the major issue here. Yeah. Kringle had a, a paraffin blend for like a hot minute and it wasn't particularly good. In fact, the 100% paraffin actually performed better, I think, than the paraffin blend did, and it was quickly abandoned. And I'm not really sure why it was abandoned. <laughs> Surely that could have been a middle ground there for like the country like collection or something like that. If we're not gonna do 100% paraffin, maybe we could have done a paraffin blend in that country collection. Um, and the major companies that Kringle is up against do blends. So Yankee does the blend, at least in their like new modern line, they do the blend. Bath and Body Works does blend. Homeworks does blend. I believe Goose Creek does blend too. There's a reason why these major companies do not pour in 100% soy. There's a reason for it. And it may be quite a good one. I don't know why the rush to go to 100% soy for Kringle across the board. It just seems like a very rash and impetuous decision and one that, that frankly needs a lot more thought and care. And to have done away with the fleet, basically, of paraffin candles so eagerly um, when we actually, we actually weren't entirely convinced that we have a satisfactory 100% soy product for the country line. It just seems really premature and like a bad decision. And that has basically run the country candle line into the ground, at least temporarily. Whether it resurrects itself in some kind of way is, I guess, anyone's guess. I really hate to like say these kinds of things, but I think they need to be said. Um, not only Kent from Candle Channel, but like Kevin Inanel is another one who's a very casual Kringle buyer. And he bought several of the fall collection candles this year and gave a very bad review. And was basically like, what is going on at Kringle? And I remember him saying, look, like I can complain about this, but my voice doesn't mean a whole lot because I really buy Kringle candles very sporadically. But those of you who do buy Kringle candles on the regular, and who like this company and consider it to be your mainstay, are you expressing to the company that you don't like these developments? Are you complaining? You should be complaining. <laughs> this is obviously a deprovement, you know? Um, I do think that all of us who are Kringle fans, we need to be honest and we need to be transparent about these kinds of things. Um, it is so easy especially in places like the Facebook group, etc., where it probably doesn't help that the CEO is also a member of that group. It's very easy to just be like, yes, men, and just be constantly positive about everything that comes down the line. But in the long run, that's actually not helpful to Kringle as a company. It's just not. And they've been allowed to make a lot of changes. It's almost like they've been enabled by that like, preaching to the choir kind of mentality this year to put out an enormous amount of candles that frankly weren't that great. They're heading down a direction that is, I think, not, it's not good. And it's definitely not as good as the stuff that we've seen from them in the past. Um, and if, if we aren't willing to kind of say that to the company, 
then I just think it's not going to do them any good. And there's going to come a certain point where there's going to have to be a major like path change reform. And it's probably going to be embarrassing. And it's going to come after a lot of backlash that's going to be ugly. And there's going to be fights between the two groups, the ones who are super pro Kringle and the ones who are like over it and disillusioned. And you're going to have people like Kevin Inanel and Kent who are outsiders and who don't have that kind of love and respect and generosity. And they're going to be speaking truth and it's going to be super painful. And that's the only direction it's going to come from. And it's just, it's not the way that the company should be getting feedback. And we're dropping the ball as fans by not being honest about the fact that many of these changes have not been good ones. And the performance of the candles this year were on the whole not good. Just not. I guess that's what I have to say. Um, I want to end on a positive note. Um, and I don't have the candle with me, of course. Um, this New Year's, I'm going to be burning golden cashmere. <laughs> because golden cashmere is one of my favorite candles from Kringle. And I always burn it at New Year's because it has this beautiful like gold bow, gold packaging. Which is like very festive and like party and holiday-like without it being really overtly Christmassy. And there's something bright and fresh, but also like cozy and sultry about that particular candle that just makes it perfect for early January. There are so many candles that bring me so much joy from Kringle and they will continue to for as long as they are in that catalog. And actually that one is a Kringle one. So it's a hundred percent soy. Um, and I, I love that candle. I just do. Um, so Kringle is absolutely capable of doing an incredible job and of fulfilling a kind of like market niche that makes them the only ones that could do this or do that. And I think they really need to kind of do a soul searching and, and think about the kind of corner that they want to capture. Okay. The kind of corner that they can capture in competition with other candle companies that may be easier to buy from. It's as simple as that. Going forward, I'm going to be buying far less from Kringle, but I'll be watching. And I would like to see some positive changes this year. But unless and until I see those positive changes, I am going to be much more thoughtful and much more conservative about the purchases that I make from Kringle. And in its place, I'm going to be buying a lot from Marshalls and TJ Maxx. And if that's Homeworks Candles, it's Homeworks Candles. <laughs> um, I picked up two brand new hot off the press Yankee Candles today from Target that smelled great. Um, unfortunately in their like clip art aesthetic, which I can't stand super tacky, but, um, I again could smell them. They were at a great price and I think they're probably going to perform pretty well too. Um, because that wax formula in their new modern line is actually quite good. Um, and I will be burning, you know, and buying Bath and Body Works this year as well, because I think that that's a fairly good gamble when you go to the store and you can smell it, et cetera, et cetera. There are other candle companies. We have other choices. Um, and so I think for Kringle going forward, um, they just need to maybe take a pause and just think carefully about their next moves, their next direction, their next vision, and maybe just really question for a second the road that they're on. Because from the way that I see it, I, I don't think it was a good year and I don't think this is a good direction. That's what I've got to say, Kringle Year in Review. Kind of sad. And I hope I haven't been too harsh. And I think that <laughs> this was less harsh than what I recorded initially. So I'm a little bit more happy with it. But definitely let me know what it is that you think. And maybe I've missed something. And maybe I'm just not seeing something correctly. And I totally own that and receive that. And I only wish Kringle the best going forward. I want to see them go from strength to strength, from success to success. Um, I know they're capable of it and I will be rooting for them. 
I'll see you in the next one.